Yeah, welcome back to The Breakfast. It's now time for Off The Press, the segment where we analyze today's dailies. Um, let's invite our guest now, Public Affairs Analyst, Mr. Ezekiel E. I. Tok. Good morning. Thank you for joining us. Good morning. It's a pleasure to be with you. <laughs> Fantastic. Um, across the papers this morning, Secundus is headlines. Um, let's begin with the Punch newspaper. The headline reads, Secundus battles for survival. Sambuwa rallies support as WK plots PDP chairman's removal. Rivers governor, others want Secundus out before NEC meeting national convention. Embattled party chair fingers unnamed party leader as Atiku denies involvement. Also in the Punch newspaper, Twitter ban Nigeria lose 150.46 billion naira in two months. Federal government hires JP Morgan, others on $6.2 billion fresh borrowed. Um, Federal Executive Council approves $11 billion for Lagos Calibre Coastal Rail, $1.48 billion refineries repairs. 150 Nigerian doctors ready for exams ahead practicing in UK. APC governors meet in Abuja, six soft landing for Buni, others. MDCN overstepping its bounds, failing to curb quackery. That's according to resident doctors. Uh, still more stories on the Punch newspaper. Um, there's a picture there on the Punch, and it's, uh, it's a picture of Hans. The caption reads, pangolins and elephant mass at Thorsk, intercepted by the Nigerian Customs Service, uh, said to be worth over 200 uh, billion naira in Lagos. Also, Assembly OK's AKT 19 LCDAs predicts grassroots development. As Somulu here says, my photo with Tinubu dispels rumors about his health. Also, police go after suspected cultist over bodiless head inquiry. Oyetola laments as Oshun flood strips away three, destroys houses and shops. Uh, two more stories here on the Punch newspaper. Lagos increased isolation facilities, plans for spike, and court stops DSS, AGF, from arresting Igboho and freezing accounts. All right, let's move to the Nation newspapers this morning. Hopefully it uh, should be on your screen. Uh, the PDP, of course, is still, you know, uh, in uh, some crisis. It says there's a condis. PDP chief using huge public funds to fight me. Chairman decries push for caretaker committee. Dixon, elders back leadership. Beauty member Modi dumps PDP for APC. Lagos launches 102 trucks and 100 bins to tackle refuse. And also poly student beheaded in Quara. We can also find on the nation this morning, 12 Igboho supporters granted bail in Abuja. ex Niger senator Liu dies. FEC votes $1.484 billion to fix Wari Kaduna refineries. And uh, also on the nation, three feared killed. Government house wall collapses in Oshogbo flood. A law expert says Buni can continue to lead the APC. And this one here says why government opposes payment of ransom. And that's by minister. Finally on the nation, oil price falls to $71 on Delta COVID-19 variant fear. Uh, let's turn to the Guardian newspaper now. The headline reads, Government Twitter silent as ban clocks two months. Tears, grief as NYC flies bodies of core members to Uyo for burial. 20 prospective core members test positive for COVID-19 in Kano. Chibok girl, terrorist, hobby, surrender to troops in Bornu. Court admits Igboho's associates to 10 million naira, 5 million naira bail. Lagos showcases 120 trucks, 100 locally assembled bins to tackle waste. All right, and let's move to the uh, Daily Independent now, which uh, comes up next. It says here, PDP leadership crisis, Secundus gets a lifeline. Atiku denies sponsoring move to sack party chairman. Attempts to hijack party would lead to, uh, lead to implosion, Dixon warns. Also, Nigerians responsible for leadership impunity, and that's from Wale Inka. Nigeria must address neglected tropical diseases to attain UHC, says experts. Say 122 million persons at risk. Flood wrecks havoc in Oshogbo, renders hundreds homeless. 
FEC OKs $15.44 billion for Coastal Rail Line Worry Kaduna Refinery Repairs. And court restrains AGF and DSS from arresting Iboho, freezing his bank accounts. Supporters get bail after one month in detention. Tinubu Hale and Hati says Songwo Olu. Oanez praises army for restoring peace in the southeast. Troops overrun insurgents, force 87 to surrender in Borno. And flush out criminals in Abia Forest, Ipoazu charges security men. And with that, we'll say uh, good morning once again to Mr. Ezekiel Nyai Talk. Thanks for joining us. And um, we probably can start with the crisis in the PDP. You know, um, Sir Ike Dixon says it might lead to an implosion, which is secundus, of course, is, uh, you know, the name that keeps uh, reappearing here and then in the news. Um, what do you see playing out? Um, the very first thing is that for the first time in a long time, I, I have almost regretted leaving the PDP uh, in 2010. I had a very good relationship with the PDP. I was doing very well in the PDP. I was a World and Local Government Congress um, Committee Chairman of the PDP to one of the states. And I operated at um, probably some of the highest levels in the PDP. But one day, I just was not too happy with, um, you know, the politics of... Um, you know, being being loyal to what you may think is wrong, and um, it is one of the party um, expectations of a loyal of a loyal party member for you to always stand by the, the party. And I really didn't want that again. So I held a press conference and I resigned my membership of the PDP. As at that time, the PDP looked like they were going to be in government for the next sixty years. So things were going very well, extremely well had a good relationship with my governor, extremely good, right up to the presidency. I was doing very well in the PDP, but I felt that I owed this nation the truth and not the comfort of being in a party that could give me anything I wanted. That said, since that time, I've not looked back. But when I see the event of the past um, few months, I feel really, really bad that, um, that the PDP really cannot take advantage of, of, of it's like, it's like um, you, are, you are battling somebody and the person falls to the ground and you are just to deliver the final, you know, killer punch. And you are standing and watching the person and the person on the ground is poaching your members using all manner. You see, you can either be defensive or you are offensive in a fight. PDP has gone into itself to an opposition that is defensive, and it bothers me. How can somebody leave the PDP for APC as of today? On what indices of governance? Is it that they are doing well in economy, or they are doing well in, in security, or they are doing well in fighting corruption, or, or the, pride, the, the value of life has improved so much, or things have gotten better since they took over power? What is the indices? Why would a rational person leave you know, where the person is, no matter how bad, to somewhere else that is not much better in any way. It, it, it's preposterous. And that is because the PDP have failed as an opposition party. They don't, they, you Mr. Know, Yeto, I, Mr. Oh, Yeto, yeah. um, allow me, please. Yeah. I want us to really um, talk about secondus because this is a really serious issue. Those members of the National Executive Committee um, blamed yeah. secondus over his, for poor leadership, saying that's why they left. And Secundus yeah. put out a statement yesterday which he titled, Who is after Secundus and why is somebody in love with a caretaker? This was signed by his media aide in Abuja yesterday. And he went on to allege that Secundus now alleged that there is, according to him, that he had intelligence that there is a strong party chieftain that is bent on hijacking the party structure of the PDP, um, aimed at denting his image. And quickly reaction to this article went on to deny any links to, you know, Al Secondo saying that his, his interest is to safeguard the party and make sure everybody's on the same page. So if Secondus now is saying that there's a strong party leader in the PDP who wants him out, Atiku has come out to say he definitely is not the one. What do you think we're having on our hands? I'll tell you, I'll tell you what we're having on our hands. You see, if you have noticed, I do not take the narrative that, so that the, somebody wants me to take. I take the narrative that makes sense to the public. 
You see, they want that conversation to move from what's happening in PDP to, oh, there is an article secondus fight. For goodness sake, how does that affect the price of Gary in the market? Hmm. I couldn't care less what's, what's happening between them. I care that the APC is not put on their toes. That's, that's what affects the common man. Because when the APC is put on their toes, they will sit up, they will wake up, they will do what is right. They will know that the heat is on them. They will go into what governance is. They will not have the luxury of as much as contemplating. But doesn't that, doesn't, that, doesn't that translate to failure of the PDP leadership? You know, of, of course, course Uche is. Secundus, you know, the back point. to the question. That is the point. That is what we should address. Failure of the PDP leadership. Not personal tussles. tussles. That's not my business. Secundus, in my personal opinion, has not been able to drive that party as a party that wants to come back to power. He looks like somebody who is very comfortable where he is and don't touch my office, which is what I blame Mr. President for a lot of times. It's not about governance of the country. It's like, leave my office, leave my office, don't touch me. You can do anything, but just leave me. As long as I'm in power, it's okay. It's not okay. You were not given a mandate to be in power. No, you were given a mandate to lead. You have given a mandate to ensure that governance is, if you were removed, it was time for you to do stock taking, look at the places that you didn't do well, and then constantly be on the face of Nigerians to tell them, this is what we don't, did wrong, we, had, we admit it. You see, one of the biggest um, um, you know, uh, credits that Nigerians gave to anybody was when President, for late President Yaradua said, the process that brought me to power was flawed. Now, that was supposed to be an admittance of weakness, but that became one of his greatest strengths till he died. And because I acknowledge that it was flawed, I am doing this, one, two, three. I expected the chairman, I, I really wish I was the chairman of PDP, because this is a time for you to have said, fellow Nigerians, you know, over these past years, I've really sat back and looked at the things and I think we took a lot of things for granted. We didn't do this well. We didn't do this well. We didn't do this well. That's not okay. And we have learned our lessons. Henceforth, this is the way we think. In terms of internal party politics, you know, good governance, in terms of national vision, in terms of this, in terms of that, and people say, oh, thank God you've come to your senses. Anyway, what are you saying? That's the strategy. But when last did you see that guy on your station or any other station? When last did you see that leadership? When last did you see that inspiration? When, when last did you see him visit a non-PDP state to go and tell the people they took back this state, now this is what it was, this is where we are today, we're taking back, members, come back, those of you that are thinking, of, don't bother leaving, we are coming back. You kind of inspire, hope is the anchor that stabilizes the soul, hope. Yeah. That is what President Buhari was selling to the 10 million votes he had. He doesn't give money. But he had a way of selling hope and letting the people there that know that when Baba is there, we are okay. That's hope. All right, Mr. And, let's and let's quickly me. turn to another story. Um, we saw this one across the papers as well, and it's about Sunday Igboho. On the Daily Independent, it reads, Court restrains AGF, DSS, from arresting Igboho. Uh, that's on the Daily Independent. Uh, court restrains AGF, DSS, from arresting Igboho and freezing his bank account. Also, supporters get bail after one month in detention. Now, this also went on to say that um, um, they get bail uh, for about 10 million and also 5 million naira. So this um, high court in Oyo State has basically said that the DSS has no right to go ahead to arrest Ibohu or to freeze his bank account. But we know our law enforcement agencies too well and how they relate with court judgments. Do you see them obeying this one this time? You see, that's one of the tragedies of a nation. That is one of the results of impunity. That is one of the consequences, unfortunately, of a people that don't see anybody that is putting fire on their butt. So they can do anything. They can disregard court order. And nobody is, is, is raising Nigerians to say, hey, what, what is, this is what we wanted to run away from. We can get into this. Do you understand me? Now the court orders are disregarded fragrantly without any, any second thought. And that's because it's like nobody's going to do anything. 
Okay, that's number one. But coming down to Ibuho directly, you see, it shows you the difference between tact and strategy. It shows you the difference between somebody who thinks through processes and somebody who just thinks that anything can be done. It shows the difference between uh, Namdi Kanu and Iboho. Namdi Kanu came as a lord who was a master and had control over everything. And the day he fell, he was isolated. If not for a few handful of young people that are still looking things from a certain prison. But Ibo was careful to respect the elders, in my opinion. He was careful to carry along the people. And when push came to shove, the people are rising tactfully in his defense. So you can see that his treatment, people are like, we, we better be careful here. We better be cautious here. We better know what we do. Even the law courts know that the public is watching. Now, that is not the public sentiment that Kano had. And yet these are two, if not for the British government, if not for Kanu being a British citizen, as of today, he'd probably be a forgotten issue. And again, it comes back to nationhood. How do you treat your citizens? Kanu is a black guy. Kanu is known as a Nigerian, but because he has that British passport, he has the, 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 the backing of the system as it were. And if Kanu had been a little careful to be more respectful, to be a lot more tactful, by today he will be receiving help right. from abroad and from home. Okay. So I think that we should always bring things to this perspective in governance. That's why I don't like talking individuals. People have right to their preferences, to their, you know, you know, maybe their 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 differences or you know uh, whatever they want to do. But we should look at principles that lead to good governance or nationhood. And that's right, why Mr. that's Nettok. a great thing I to take. Okay, let, let's matters. move to um, something on the Daily Independent. You know, it's a, you know, it's a conversation that has been going on for so many years and it feels like we may never actually get, you know, the truth out of, you know, or the right answers out of this. It's from Wale Shoinka and it says, Nigerians are responsible for leadership impunity. The Nigerian people would always argue, you know, that they are not to blame. You know, it's, it's bad leadership that has put us where we are. And of course, you know, there's also going to be other, you know, uh, perspectives. Do you agree here with Wale Shoinka that it's the Nigerian people that well, are responsible? 100%. Now, if you look at just, just for a minute, pause and ask yourself, what's the national conversation concerning 2023 today? And I watched a video where a young lady was, was she was literally wailing, who bewitched us? And I think it was the advocate, which is your session. Who bewitched us? Don't we know that there are certain fundamental principles that lead to success? Focus, um, things like, you know, clear vision, excellence, you know, re right reward. These are global principles that lead to success. Today, Nigeria has become the poverty capital of the world. We are talking in terms of recruiting the next chief executive of this country come 2023. Where is the conversation? Oh, is Atik well and hearty? Is he the one plotting secondus? Oh, how about um, Mr. Tinubu? Is he okay? That's a co it, it. The question is, why are you asking these questions? Are you saying that if WTO needed a leader, which is less than a country, that this will be the conversation that would have? Who is coming to analyze the things that a man like Professor Mohanu is saying? Who is coming to dialogue in terms of recruitment criteria for 2023? Where is our national conversation going? We will continue to be talking about Tinubu's health, articles, um, you know, plots to remove or not remove. We'll be continuing to do that until 2023 appears on our face and we're like, oh my God, who do we choose between? The devil and red, blue sea. We choose one of them. And then we now start the whining and then we collect the money. And then how will you blame the leaders? These people paid you to get your mandate. They've taken your mandate. It was a transaction. So they run their game. So Mr. Yechok, what do you think are some of the first steps that Nigerians need to take to correct all this wrong? 
Number one, we the the elites, the elites, <coughs> the Nyaitoks of this world. You, Anita Felix, and my brother Osan, you need to deliberately avoid those narratives that they want you to run in the media. Deliberately, consciously, and your policy of a station is on proper leadership recruitment. Yes, you can carry the news, but let the news be tinted in a way that it does not go to do analysis of issues that hold that bring no value to the government. When I come here and talk that way, I go to my Facebook page and talk that way. I go to all the platforms that I have influence and start to preach good governance and the media comes in, we will turn the conversation into an area that the bad people are uncomfortable with. And then we'll now to start to inspire good people to start to talk up. When we do that, we would have started the process of creating a nation that works so that the conversation, like in my state, by the grace of God, I'm contesting the governorship you know, in 2023. And I've come up with what they call social governance ideology. Mine is the person that you want to support. No problem, support him. But the question is, what is he saying? I took up a radio program every Wednesday, or now it's on Mondays, you know, I, and I'm on it like a preacher, like an itinerant preacher. Now, you also, also take up the space, enlighten the people. Nigerians are very good people, but they are very highly gullible. When you don't say the things that they should know, then listen to these people who are saying nothing. Oh, they are fighting me. They want to take my office. They are ganging up against me. How does that affect the price of Gary in the market? I say it again. What All is right. the philosophy of, of, of PDP? What is the ideology? Why did I join ADC? Because they come up and say, we have a DNA, a party, talking in terms of DNA. And then they listed the criteria of the DNA, five of them. And I say, this makes sense to me. It's a small party in quote, though they came third in the general elections. All right, Mr. Mr. Yeto, Mr. Yeto, no, let, um, me let me say this. Let um, me say we're this. running out of time, unfortunately. I, I'm really sorry, but I was wondering if we could just quickly um, leave the political conversations and just go straight into what the everyday Nigerian is facing, especially when it comes to rainy seasons year in, year out. I mean, in Oshobo, the news carries it that about 200 residents in Oshobo have basically been displaced because of the flood. And you have the governors come out to say, oh, this is the fault of the residents. They keep, you know, clogging up the drainage with, refuse so i don't know is this also something we can blame on the people or is this failure of the government no, to put in infrastructure? no i don't blame on the people Please this happens ahead. to be my area this happens to be my area i don't blame the people government runs on policies and when you come up as a responsible government your citizens will obey you what is the the the, the, the master plan when you don't have a master plan and people buy land and build houses, are you blaming the people that they bought land and they built houses and they didn't know that those were drain routes? Come up and give a drain master plan of the city. Then all the people that are affected, don't blame them, pay them the compensation. Start to put things right, let everybody know you cannot build without an approval. You, you cannot get an approval except you are off the no, no build zones. These are simple, straightforward ABCs. Anybody that flouts your, your, your instruction thereafter, you will bring the full weight of the law on the person. Don't sit oh. here and look like, oh, you are helpless. The citizens are doing what they want. That's why you elected as a governor to give them direction reward those who do well and punish those who want oh. to take you for granted it's pretty much That's the same the thing um in 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 many other states in the country lagos has its own fair share of uh, flooding every now and then when it rains um you know there's failure of uh, proper drainage you know failure of proper infrastructure you know for water management and so you know we continue to see these things you know and of course you know i, I always like to mention the fault of the local governments you know here uh, the fault of the state government in this uh, situation also. And we continue to ignore these things and blame citizens for throwing, you know, uh, pure water sachets in, in, the, in the gutter. But that's really not what it is. Um, it's not fear of proper drainage. It's fear of lack of proper planning. Planning. Let the master plan for drainage be mapped out. 
Let the citizens be engaged. Let it be implemented in phases. Those that build based on your approved plan, compensate them. And then we would have started a process. This government alone, this tenor will not be able to do it. We would have started a process of bringing back a master plan where it has a drain route, and then we see what is possible and what is not possible. Right. It is a doable. And the government of Lagos State, incidentally, I have a lot of confidence in them. I'm sure that someone will look and get it done. Okay. Mr. Ezekiel Yaito, thank you very much thank for you. your time this Thursday morning. Thanks for speaking with us. Thanks so much. Always a pleasure. Have thank a great you. day. Um, you know, it's, it's a good thing to ask because there's also, um, you know, quick, uh, reports that I've seen, you know, that uh, Lagos might be submerged, you know, in less than a decade, you know, with water. And that's w mostly with regards to climate change um, and, uh, you know, uh, where Lagos currently is situated. So that there's, there's those fears. And um, if care is not taken, you know, I always like to ask, you know, how many more people need to be affected by the flood? How many more vehicles need to be affected by the flood before the legacy government understands the urgency with which it should fix uh, the drainage system in Lagos? Yeah, I, I mean, during the last rains that occurred a few weeks back, we saw people's cars that were basically as though they were dropped in water. Yeah. Such a terrible so. situation. Uh, let's take a break here. We'll come back uh, with today's history. I'm going to the year 1962, when one of our all-time favorite actresses passed on. And I'm going back to 1960. Stay with us.